It's no secret that there are racial disparities in health care, and when it comes to the reproductive health, it is especially exaggerated. Get this, an estimated 26 million women have fibroids, which are non-cancerous tumors that grow on the wall of the uterus, and black women are at an increased risk for the disease. Black women are two to three times more likely to suffer fibroids, and that is compared to white women. According to the Mayo Clinic, fibroids often appear during a woman's childbearing years. Most don't cause problems and never turn into cancer. However, millions of people do suffer from debilitating symptoms. Those include heavy menstrual bleeding, long periods, pelvic pain, frequent urination, difficulty emptying bladder, constipation, or even back aches. According to a study published by the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, while many women will get fibroids, by age 50, they are more common and more severe among black women. We're talking about hospitalizations from symptoms, and some cases are so bad they have to undergo surgery because their best option for relief is to have the fibroids removed. Imagine living with these symptoms and you don't even know what's causing it. Research shows black women are more likely to experience symptoms longer before seeking treatment. Even when they go to the doctor, they report significant delays in fibroid diagnosis and find it harder to get valid information on treatment. When you hear that stat, it's kind of jarring, right? So I brought in a panel of women who are suffering from fibroids and also a doctor who has been practicing dealing with this for more than 25 years here in Metro Atlanta. I'm joined now by Dr. John Lipman, Camila Miller, and also Kena Willis. Thank you guys so much for joining us to talk about this very, very important topic. When you have these stories in the news and you say, black people are more likely, there are a lot of stories and diagnoses that come behind that sentence. I want to dive into first, Dr. Lippman, why are we seeing black women so heavily impacted by fibroids? Well, nobody knows where fibroids come from, but once they arrive on the scene, they grow with estrogen. Um, that's why they can grow rapidly during a pregnancy and why they tend not to be an issue for most women when they're in menopause. And so estrogen is just pervasive. It's in the food, it's in the water. There are certain hormone rich foods that stimulate fibroids to grow. Uh, fat is a storage reservoir for estrogen. Estrogen is produced and stored in fat. So one of the reasons why African-American women disproportionately suffer with fibroids is in general they have more body fat than other racial groups. Asian women have the lowest body fat and the lowest fibroids, but there are a lot of other issues that go with this. Vitamin D is really important. If you have a normal vitamin D, your risk for fibroids or suffering from fibroids is much lower. And only 10% of African-American men or women have adequate vitamin D. So we try in our practice to try to do the things we can control. There's genetic things we can't pick our parents, but we can all try to be as close to ideal body weight. So eating healthy, avoiding hormone-rich foods, uh, eating more colored fruits and vegetables, which block estrogen. They have flavonoids, the compounds that block estrogen. Um, less body fat on you. So all these things of eating well, healthy, vitamin D, you're gonna be much less likely to suffer with fibroids. And so Camilla, I know you are a patient of Dr. Littman. We're gonna get to the food aspect coming up in just a minute because Kina treated her fibroids with food. But Camilla, tell me about your story, how you ended up seeing Dr. Littman. Yeah. <clears throat> so my fibroid journey began in uh, 2014, just a year of pain and not knowing uh, the cause or the reason and seeing a gynecologist, you know, at that time. Uh, 2015, they were diagnosed as fibroids via a trip to the ER. So I had my fibroids uh, diagnosed from the, uh, the ER, not by my own uh, gynecologist. Um, and I was vocal with my gynecologist in terms of, you know, not wanting to have a hysterectomy or a myomectomy where it just continues as the fibroids, you know, tend to, uh, to come back. So I researched, you know, different, you know, non-surgical uh, options. And it literally wasn't until 2022 where um, I came across uh, Dr. Littman during this whole time struggling with, with pain, um, canceling events because of being in pain and just the, uh, the, the, the mental and physical uh, toll that it took. So when I found uh, Dr. 
Littman through my own research, as he was never recommended to me by any of my gynecologists, um, set up a consultation with him, um, had the appointment, he said I was a good candidate, and went forward with the procedure, and I've been pain-free ever since, as well as not having the anxiety of being in pain, which is almost even more liberating than being pain-free itself. Yeah. Not diagnosed by your own gynecologist, <laughs> not recommended to an outside specialist in general, Dr. Littman's practice is literally called Fibroid Center Atlanta, right? Yeah, <laughs> Atlanta Fibroid Center. Yep, that's, yeah, and, and, sh and she described uh, one of the main symptoms, which is pelvic pain, um, which is very common in these women. Also, it's the number one reason why women have heavy menstrual flow. And as she mentioned, it, it interferes with everything you do. Everything revolves around this heavy menstrual each month. So there's physical things that go with it. You don't know if you're gonna be able to work a couple, couple days a month, have relations, you have to have extra clothing, you're just, everything you do revolves around this horrible period, as well as pain. And then you add on that the mental anguish, it's coming, each month you have to deal with this over and over again. And so there's a lot of physical and mental aspects of fibroids that a lot of women just push through, and you don't have to push through. Uterine fibroid embolization, this non-surgical outpatient procedure that we do, gets the relief of symptoms, you avoid the risks and long recovery of surgery, and importantly, you get to keep all your parts, because no one talks about what happens to women when they lose their parts. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about that. And it's, and it's significant and unnecessary for fibroids. These are benign tumors, they're not cancer. And so, Kina, that was the reason why you took the approach that you did. When you were diagnosed with fibroids, you said, there's no way that I'm having surgery because, as Dr. Lippman mentioned, what life after that looks like. Tell us your fibroid story. So, I was diagnosed in 2001. Um, I, if I had to look back, um, I noticed that I had a fibroid, maybe in undergrad. You know, I, I noticed some changes, you know, in my body. And, but I ignored it. You know, um, I could feel a, a little bulge, you know, in my lower stomach area, and I ignored it. I let people tell me that it was nothing. Um, and so in 2001, um, I actually suffered from a blood clot, mm -hmm. and that's what caused me to go to the emergency room because my leg was very swollen, I could not move. And so once they got the blood clot, blood clot under control, that's when I was diagnosed with the fibroids. The fibroid had actually caused the pressing down on those arteries and those nerves that caused the blood clot, uh, um, deep, um, deep vein thrombosis wow. in my leg. And so it became very life-threatening for me. Um, so we took care of the um, blood clot and then started to work on the fibroid. Um, it, had, it had been a very long process. Um, I, they went in to remove the fibroid to see that it was too dangerous to remove. And so the doctor stitched me back up, you know, during the surgery. Um, that was so excruciating that I said, I, I plan to go back, but I, I said, I cannot go through this pain again, you know, and I still have this fibroid. And so I started doing research, research on, you know, and noticing that when I would do fast with my church, which was a, basically a vegan fast, I didn't know about vegan, you mm -hmm. know, back then, this is back in 2001, 2002. Um, that the, four, the fibroid would get smaller, like I can visibly see the difference. I can visibly see the difference in, in my monthly cycle. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, there's some connection there. So, but I was still seeing being treated by my gynecologist and he would just say, well, if it's not bothering you anymore, you know, you're okay. At some point, you know, get pregnant, it'll go away. Well, what in his eyes, was, what wasn't bothering me was I was actually having severe anemia from it, mm -hmm. you know, getting constant blood clots, mm -hmm. I mean, um, blood transfusions, and, and the blood clots. The blood clots will come back, so I'm on Coumadin. I'm getting um, transfusions, and this is like a couple of times a year, you know. Um, I went to go and see a specialist. I, I recall so vividly seeing a specialist about UFE, um, the embolization, and it was so early on with the treatment here in the States, I did my own research, and I saw that they were saying like, well, you, this, you're not a candidate if you want to have a child. And I'm in my you know, early 30s, of course I still wanna have, late 20s, early 30s, I'm like, well, this isn't really for me because I wanna preserve my fertility. 
And so with that, um, I would constantly see my doctor monitor it, you know, and have going through those ebbs and flows of, you know, that having a transfusion, having blood clot issues, you know, basically using chem, um, Coumadin in a blood thinner as an everyday treatment. And that's yeah. not a long-term treatment yeah, at all. <laughs> that is yeah. so. You, you, um, were in a, you were in a leaky boat, yeah. and the plug comes out of the boat, and you're getting water in there. Exactly. The transfusions is bailing water over the side. Exactly. What you needed is, some, is treat the culprit, which is the fibroid. But, which was the fibroid. And so that forced me into just really looking at food as medicine. And so I came across a program, um, the Detox Now, uh, founded by Jesse Thompson and a holistic doctor. And that was just something that really resonated with me. I had already noticed for myself, absent, you know, without me being introduced to a vegan life or being introduced to a program, that I noticed physical changes in my body and the way that I felt the type of energy that I had by just incorporating, by removing meat out of my diet. Now. I did not, I wasn't a, a beef and pork eater already. I had not eaten that mm -hmm. like since I was 15. So it was just the seafood, the chicken, the dairy, you yeah. know. I was a heavy, not necessarily milk, but cheese, yeah. ice cream. And I noticed when I would remove that from my diet, even for those 40 days, how my body would change, how I would feel, how my cycle would be, my, my face would clear up. And so just through the program, I started the program in 2016. I went completely vegan. Um, changed my entire life. I mean, instantly I saw changes with my cycle, um, the um, different acne on my face. Yeah. Um, and I actually thought that I would be fibroid free in 90 days because with the program, it you know promotes like you'll be fibroid free in 90 days, you know, um, follow this protocol. And it was discouraging because I did everything to the T. Like yeah. I didn't cheat, you know, I didn't do this. But in my mind, I said, I'm gonna go back to eating my seafood after the 90 days. You know, I was just like, I'm just gonna, you know, relieve myself from these fibroids or eliminate these fibroids and go back to at least indulging in some seafood, you know, from time to time. However, that wasn't my story. It took me longer than 90 days. And I realized that this was more of a lifestyle change. Yeah. And so, um, and understanding the causes of fibroid, the estrogen dominance. So not only what I'm putting in my body, through food, but also the stressors. So work, mm -hmm. you know, um, stress is another cause of estrogen as well. And so just trying to operate from a more pet meditative state and look at it, looking at it more holistically yeah. versus just, okay, only the food. So incorporating other complementary and alternative treatments and therapies such as doing Qigong and doing colonics and doing different um, castor oil packs and along with the food, taking supplements as well. Yeah. So there's, you know, supplements that can help to break down this mucus, you know, these mucus and not having mucus forming foods as well, so. So Dr. Lipman, you did this procedure and you said just over the years, like we're talking Kina 2001, you know, told that she wasn't a good candidate for right. it. Then you meet someone like Camilla who's a perfect candidate for something like this. There are ways to not have to have your life completely changed as a result right. of you wanting to get rid of the fibroids. Right, and a lot of people can't be as strict you know, and do these things. Yeah. Um, and so they they want they don't want surgery, but they want something that will provide them the relief. And and UFE uterine fibroid embolization is that answer. Um, and there are a lot of myths surrounding it. It's it was started. I, in fact, I did the first UFE here in Georgia many years ago, and we've had numerous children after UFE. I've had multiple sets of twin births, and our births are typically full term and vaginal. Whereas if you have myomectomy surgery, they will not allow you to have a vaginal birth. It's more surgery, but UFE is a tremendous breakthrough for women, but most women never hear about it. So they either suffer in silence and just push it through, or they try to do the holistic things and some of the dietary stuff will help. It's hard though. It's very hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's very hard to be that strict. And also um, it does help to a certain degree, but a lot of women 
have fibroids that it's just there's no way they're just too invasive but the other point is that know your own body mm -hmm. she knew that there was something wrong but her doctors weren't listening to her mm -hmm. so if you're going to a doctor who is either dismissing you or you're not they're not listening to you find another doctor because nobody knows your body better than you yeah. and so if something is not right in fact this heavy bleeding which is the number one cause of heavy bleeding is fibroids if you're bleeding heavily, it doesn't matter what your hemoglobin level is, what your doctor tells you. If it's interfering with your quality of life, that ain't normal. Yeah. And it needs to be fixed. And so UFE is a great fix for heavy bleeding from fibroids. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Camilla, I just want to ask, you know, how has life changed for you after having this surgery? It's It's been great. Uh, less anxiety from the pain also for that period of time when I was dealing with it, I was given uh, different non-anti-inflammatory uh, steroids. So be it meloxicam, ibuprofen, um, and it eventually just destroyed my stomach lining. Mm. And that was diagnosed via, via endoscopy that I had. So there was a lot of gastrointestinal issues that I was having. So that has all gone away as well because I'm not dependent on all of these, you know, painkillers. So. Uh, the anxiety of, of being in pain is eliminated. Um, I no longer have to be uh, imprisoned by, you know, what's going to happen? Will I have to uh, not attend an event or do I stay at home all day with a heating pad? So all that is, has, has gone away. I have not been in pain since the procedure. Wow. And it's, it's been a little over a year now. So I'm so grateful, so thankful. Um, and just being an advocate for myself because no one referred me. I remember Dr. Littman asking, you know, uh, who referred you? I was like, I did. I, I found did. you. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Sometimes so, you have to be your own advocate. Yeah, it's unfortunate, yeah. but, you know, say, you know your body better than anyone. Mm -hmm. Seek out the answers. Don't yeah. accept. Get that second opinion. If you're yeah. suffering with fibroids, you don't have to have hysterectomy. No matter what the gynecologist says, yeah. it's an option. Yeah. But in my opinion, it should be the option of absolute last resort because UFE is so good, you get the relief of symptoms. Literally, patients come into our center, Atlanta Fibroid Center, it's a 30 minute procedure, they go home in several hours with a Band-Aid. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's it, a Band-Aid and their uterus. Yeah. Please keep the, the uterus, yeah, yeah, that is yeah. a goal for many yeah. people. We are so glad to know that there are options out there. We hope if you've been enlightened that you learn about some of these options and we're gonna have much more information for you on 11alive.com and on 11 Alive Plus. We thank you guys for joining us uh, to bring awareness to this issue and that women can keep seeking out these options and live healthy and happy lives. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you.